In May 2020, a story exploded onto the internet about a young girl claiming to have been trafficked, pimped and raped in the town of Barrow. She was arrested and remanded in prison. Straight away, cries went out across the country of a state cover-up and a police cover-up. I travelled to Barrow to investigate to find out what had gone on in this town. I was arrested by police and I was prevented from giving any publication as I was given conditions I wasn't even allowed to talk about child exploitation within the town of Barrow or even enter the area of Cumbria. The trial has now concluded and it's been found that Ellie Williams was lying. Leftist organisations, politicians alike, many journalists made the claims I travelled there to incite racial hatred against the Muslim community. The truth can now be told which is the total opposite. I was the only journal journalist motivated to go there to find the truth. I confronted campaigners and I sat down and interviewed the alleged perpetrators. Finally, now, we can tell you the story of what we found. So there's Snapchat under your name, yeah. but they found no forensics linking that to your phone. Yeah. What evidence did they have on these? Literally nothing. This is what I don't get. First time in prison, what was it like? Horrible. I was surrounded by dirty old paedophiles and old men. It was horrible. I turned to drugs, drink, tried ending my own life. My life's been destroyed. And they exploit people's fears. They exploit their worst natures and they fill the void with misinformation and conjecture. First of all, I'm Tommy Robinson. Yep. You're a Muslim business, business owner. Yes, I am. You've agreed to meet with me. Yes. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? <laughs> Spit at me again! Spit at me again! Spit at me again! Hey, you're on, mate. You're on, mate. Nope. Yep. What have you been here for? Do you think I can forget that? No, I can't. I can't. The post put on Facebook was by a girl called Ellie Williams with horrific injuries claiming to have been raped by local. Muslim gangs. Muslim grooming gangs in the UK have been covered up in towns and cities across our nation. Anger has been building and when Ellie's injuries were shown, it brought it home to people. It spread like wildfire. The Justice for Ellie campaign was launched. Major figures began promoting the Justice for Ellie campaign. One of those was Maggie Oliver. Maggie Oliver was a police detective who resigned in disgust at the way the police had handled previous grooming scandals. Another person who was happy to promote it without any investigation was Countdown's Rachel Riley. Like many London elitists, Rachel Riley doesn't like Tommy Robinson. She's been successful in having me demonetised, even though I speak out for and attempt to represent the same people her friend Maggie Oliver claimed to. Dell, could you please stop advertising on Rebel Media? You're inadvertently funding fake news hate mongering. The easiest thing I could have done is travelled up to Barrow. This suited and fitted my narrative perfect. Muslim men using local businesses to rape young children. That would have been the easiest thing to do. In fact, that's the thing many on the left claim I did do. But that is not what I did at all. I travelled to investigate, to bring you, the British public, the truth. And the local ruling politician at the time denounced my arrival in the town, saying that it's only going to stoke more tensions and make things worse in Barrow. I want to concentrate the remainder of my time on different aspects of this debate, and that's around those with vested interests stirring up tensions to suit their own ends. In Barrow, we've seen the sharp end of these vested interests. They take the vacuum of information that forms when investigations start or when court processes begin, and they exploit people's fears. They exploit their worst natures and they fill the void with misinformation and conjecture that serve no one but themselves. And every single newspaper covering the story denounced our arrivals, including Ellie's family. Except we didn't turn up with thousands of men after reading one Facebook post. We turned up with a camera, a microphone, as a journalist to investigate. Regardless, just to find the truth, regardless if it went against our own bias. And very quickly, we found that Ellie Williams was not a reliable witness. We found that there were multiple other men who had been accused of rape, separate to the new allegations of the Muslim grooming gangs. We sat down with one of those men to find out what had happened in his life. That man was Jordan Trengrove. When did you know Ellie? Or when did this, uh, when did this incident, when did this incident Ellie, when was it alleged to have occurred? Uh, I can't remember the exact dates, but it was in, from April, mid-April to 
mid May. Mid April to mid May. Yeah. Last year. Yeah. Twelve months ago. So basically a year ago. Yeah. And what was the first you heard of it? I didn't know anything about it till the police came through my my door in the airport and arrested me, and I was confused, like what's going on. What like, did they question you on? What was the accusation? Uh, ABH and a rape. That you'd beat her up and raped yeah. her. Where was this? Where did she? Where did she say this happened? At my friend's house. Okay, at your friend's house. Had you been at that house? I was at my friend's house that night, but the police took me home on that night, and the police knew who I was with. Okay. They said there was no evidence of that because the camera wasn't on in the van, but I could clearly see the camera was on in the back of the van. And what's happened next? You've been arrested? Yeah. Put out on bail? Yeah, I was let out on bail with conditions not to get in contact, not to go on Bar Island. Yep. And I can't remember the other bail condition. I think it was just some about only to go to the job centre if I needed to. Okay. And then and then what's the next what what's happened next if you're out on bail, you're waiting for your court date? I got arrested again for the same. But this time my window got smashed and I rang the police because my window got smashed because of all the accusations. And next thing the police turn up about my window but arrest me on another rape and ABH again. On Ellie again? Yeah. From before this or? Uh, after the first one. So she said after you're on bail for yeah. rape, she said you've raped her again? Mm hmm. Where was this meant to have happened? Her house which I had no idea of where it was till I got them statements. Had you been to her house? Nope. You hadn't been near her? Mm. Well, how did she say what, you just come in, you broke in? Uh, in one of them, I apparently broke in. And then the other one, apparently, I just walked into her house. So two separate times after you've first been bailed, she yeah. said you've gone back and raped her again mm -hmm. and again. Yep. And that's when they remanded you? Uh, they remanded me on the third one. On the third accusation? Yeah. What evidence did they have on these? Literally nothing. This is what I don't get. Because the forensic DNA came back, there was nothing found on either me or her. Nothing found on my phone, it was all found on hers. When you say it was all found on hers, what like do you mean? Like the Snapchat and that. So these are, so there were messages. Yeah. P p su supposed to be from you. Yeah. Saying what? I can't remember what they said, but they were d disgusting. Threats of rape and things yeah. like violence. Mm -hmm. So there's Snapchat under your name. Yeah. But they found no forensics linking that to your phone. Yeah. And then they've remanded you. And how long was your remand for? Uh, from the 21st of May to the 1st of August. Three months. Yeah, three and a half. In, so we've went up until these points of all these accusations. What was life like for you, generally? Just I was living a good life, like, just playing. I'd, I have bad anxiety, so I wouldn't go out either way, like, without someone. But I just, my life was good, like, and then these accusations came on and it's just gone downhill from there. What's happened since these accusations? Since the first accusations, what's happened to you? I've had threats. I've turned to drugs, drink, tried ending my own life. You have? Yeah. When did you try and end your own life? Uh, I was messaging my girlfriend's friend saying I'm going now and I just went and sat Since off. when you was on bail? No, after I got out of prison. Like, Once you got out of jail? It was just still just horrible. Like I had, The other day there was a status put up on Facebook and it was aimed at my missus because we put my side of the story out on Facebook. And you, you put your side of the story out yeah, on Facebook? Yeah, we had to delete it because of the threats we've got. And there was threats. I am People threatening to petrol bomb the house, smash the windows, sex traffic my girlfriend's kids. So let's just understand. So you, you, you're, in, you're in jail. You're yeah. on remand for these offences. How come you got let out? Because there was no forensic evidence. I was granted crown bail. And then two weeks later, I got a phone call from my solicitor saying, can you attend court? I said I've got no money to be able to attend, so they did it with me excluded. Yeah. And then I got a phone call saying everything's been acquitted and you've got a not guilty. Do you feel like you've got a not guilty? Yeah, because I know I haven't done anything. But do you feel like you've been properly get 
cleared your name? I know. Or do you still feel like you, I know? I know you like you know you're innocent, but what I'm saying is, do you feel like everyone else now knows you're innocent? No, because everyone's still saying like he did do it, and the only way he got cleared is because Ellie didn't turn up to court. She had no reason to turn up to court. They didn't even make it to trial. The trial was listed in November. When I say about how you lost, how how was prison for you? Have you been in prison before? No, it was my first time. First time in prison. What was it like? Horrible. Was in the sex offenders location. Yep. Didn't want to be, but it's the way it had to be. And I was surrounded by dirty old paedophiles and old men. It was horrible. It's been three months. Then you was released. And what I'm struggling. What? Because. What do you think then? What did you think when you've read the statement by Ellie, the most recent one? What were your thoughts when you saw that? I don't know what to believe because obviously she's lied about me and other people. Like, I honestly don't know what to believe. Like, I'm not saying she deserves what's happened or if it is true, but if she is, a, is lying about it, then she deserves to go to prison and have a very long time in prison. You're randomly, you've never been in trouble with the law before, you then get accused of rape. Yeah. What was, how did you feel at that moment? Angry and, like, why has it happened to me? Like, Do you have family in Barrow? Yeah. What's it been like for your family? Horrible. I had rapists spray painted on my mum's house. Her window smashed. Your window was smashed in your house? Yeah. Over. And I thought it was my ex-partner that had done it and I rang the police and, um. When the police came, that's when they first arrested him. <coughs> arrested Jordan. They con went straight to Jordan. They didn't take him in the house. They were just on the front. And Jordan was like, someone's just put my window, my mum's window through and blah, blah, blah. And they said, you're under arrest for rape. And all the rest of it. So I mean, and yeah, as a parent, it's not nice. You must, feel help must have felt helpless. Yeah. How did he cope? I don't know how we felt. Did you visit him in jail? I visited him at the police station. The night before they remanded him. And it was only because the sergeant knew me from being young. And she she let me give him a hug. And I can remember being with Nicole, me and Nicole went to see him and took him some clothes. And he just, it weren't just like tears, it was snot, everything from his nose. And he was like, Mum, I'm not going to lie to you. If they remind me tomorrow as a rapist, you're not going to see me again. Because I will come out in a box. And that's when, when I did cuddle him, he was just shake, shaking. Do you know what I mean? How do you, all I can remember is not wanting to let go. Do you know what I mean? Is that the last time I'm going to smell him? Is that the last time I'm ever going to feel him? Is it the last time I'm going to see him? Do you know what I mean? You can't just... It's wrong. It was horrible for my nana. My nana couldn't even come see me in prison because that's how horrible it was for her. It was horrible. My mum had a miscarriage because of it all. Like all the stress, it's not nice. It had a bad effect on my whole family. What about now? So you've said you've come out of jail and problem hasn't gone you've you've tried to commit suicide since coming out of custody yeah have you seeked help yeah I'm on antidepressants and I'm getting counseling would you want anything like that before no like I'm constantly going out the house even when I'm with my girlfriend I'm looking over my shoulder you are scared yeah. like I've got to go to Barrow on Monday to see my mum for my birthday and I'm honestly scared to go So your life's been turned upside down, your life's been... My life's been destroyed. And I tell, I tell my missus all the time, if I didn't meet her, there's a good chance I'd be dead. Because I... Honestly, my mental state before I met was just drinking drugs all the time. Before you met your missus now? Yeah. I was hoping to find the family and ask them. Yeah. Who's, who's Jordan? Because they haven't mentioned it, which I think is dishonest. You're building momentum for a... You're building massive momentum. There's a lot of angry people out there. 
but you haven't included you, you lot know that there's seven false allegations against innocent people who have been and now she's faces charges but you know that she's on tag the my, my 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 thinking is that she'd probably be in tag because they can't allow her to not be on tag after seven o'clock because she made seven accusations saying people raped her at night probably so they need to have her on bad tag i don't know the public anger that's out there has no idea of any of this would all these people be the same would the people be feeling the same if they knew there's seven other if they knew what's happened to your life and seven other men Oh, I don't really know what to do with this. Yeah. Uh, it's such a fucking... <laughs> mm. I think we've got, we've got enough and we'll, we'll have to see what we can legally use. What it gives me the ability to do, if I'm covering, if I'm saying this, is to say, well, I've met with men that have been falsely accused. And they've been cleared in court. And each time the accusation was made, Ellie had massive physical bruising. No one actually gives a fuck about what's happened there. Really, in the, in the movement side of Me Too and all this fucking bollocks, the man's life's destroyed. The, the, the woman makes the accusation, your life's destroyed, there's no fucking evidence. You can't... What now? Like, fucking hell, mate, where's all the fucking, where's all the support for him? You've got, she's getting contacted now by every single time, everyone, to support. We were coming up here to support. Yeah. But where's the support for fucking the seven men? I hope you get, I hope that we, you're looking six months on this and, you're, and you are cleared yeah. that everyone knows. And I hope you get the sympathy that... I hope so, my myself. That's currently being aimed at Ellie. Jesus, man. You see, I wonder if Maggie Oliver and all that realise about I've this. messaged Maggie Oliver. I've Have made her aware that she lied about she, me. And oh, let's, let me ask, ask this. Oh, press, press yeah. one. That's what I sent Maggie Oliver. This the what big you sent Maggie Oliver, yeah? See, yeah. So Maggie, just, just understand, you've seen Maggie Oliver's involvement in this. Yeah. She's come out clarifying 100% that this has happened to Ellie. Yeah. And that the text messages, what did you think when she said, here's a text message 100% sent to her by a rapist? Have you seen that? Yeah, I've she seen everything. What did you think when you saw that text message? When Maggie Oliver's saying this is 100% the text message? And that there was a fake Snapchat found of me on her phone, so what, what's stopping her from doing it again? So on her phone, for your case, she'd made a Snapchat profile of you, yep. but it was actually found on her phone, and there was messages from you making threats and violence yep. and implicating you in a rape, yep. but the Snapchat account was on, on her phone, not on yours? Yeah. Let me read this. Let me read what you've said to Maggie Oliver then. Because Maggie, Maggie Oliver is actually... Let me, oh. oh, she has replied then. I've seen you have posted Ellie's story. Ellie has not been remanded relating the, the sex gang things. She has been remanded for breaking her court bail conditions against me and several other people. Now, how do you think we feel? I was sent to prison because of her disgusting lies. Had rapists sprayed in my house windows. Smashed labelled to this big bad rapist but never have I once slept with her or done anything like that. It's disgusting. So what about the justice for us? Do we just let it blow away? Because it ain't, she ruined my life. I was sat in a cell for four and a half months. Surren surrender, but real dirty paedophiles that messes with your head. And I have every last bit of paperwork stating my innocence and all the DNA took from me and her on the allegations on the same night and her clothing and door handle, bed sheets, etc. On the night of these allegations, there was no DNA found. And also she made out I was Snapchatting her. Police took my phone and my Xbox and her phone and electric devices. And guess what? There was a Snapchat account sat on her phone, not mine. Also, Ellie had accused me of rape three times, ABH. And guess what? It turned out all to be false allegations. People say I got left that her not turning up to court trial. That's the first I heard because it, it never made it to trial. I got granted bail by Crown Court. And then two weeks later, Judge and CPS both said I was not guilty and acquitted me of all charges. She has ruined my life and my family's. Not to forget the other lad she has done this to. Either I've had enough now and now I ain't holding back my side of the story because I'm sick of watching over my shoulder 24-7 thinking what's going to happen next. To see where I'm coming from, it ain't fair. I ain't saying it's what, if what happened to Ellie comes out to be true, she deserved it because it's so wrong and no one should have to go through that. Like I say, she destroyed my life and mud sticks. So you, um, you're still very open-minded yeah. about if it's what happened to her, how bad. Hi, 
I don't know details of this case nor what happened to you. All I know is that there are several young girls saying the same as Ellie about a grooming gang in Barrow and that there has not been a proper investigation. And also professionals I've spoken to are cooperating that too, hence why I've shared the post. And I see often throughout the country, which is why I try to share when I can. But it sounds like Jordan has had a tough, very tough time too. And I feel sad that that and my posts are no reflection on his case, etc. So please, can you let him know? I really hope you recover. When was this? Um, 22nd of May? Yeah. Well, this was three, four days ago. So she, she hasn't mentioned this. She's carried on full level, hasn't she? Mm hmm She's carried on full level, lever after after hearing that, and not just carrying on full lever, but promoting herself as well. That's not right, I don't think. Can't think of anything else. Will you? No, neither can I. I'm just trying to think of what to do now with it. Just to finish. No, yeah. not to finish. No, I even mean the whole fucking thing, because well, we've got to investigate. See everyone else, see everyone else and, and see what they're all saying. And just facts, mate. That's it. Yeah. Facts. Gonna, but these fucking facts are mental, mate. Yeah. She's fucked him. Well. Yeah. All right. Well, mate. I appreciate you giving us your time. Um. You need all this, don't you? Yeah. She wouldn't allow the fucking vaginal examination. A general examination was performed and the complainant was reluctant for the general examination and would permit vulva or low vaginal swabs only. She was reluctant to engage, <laughs> appearing hesitant in her speech and manner. She didn't want to engage in it. She had no eye contact with myself during her. Her voice was quiet in the tone. Fucking hell, bro. Right. Take that out. What do you think? Yeah. I don't really. Uh, because the fact, look, the fact, the fact of the matter is, there shouldn't be a fucking massive protest in fucking Barrow. Jordan was a young man whose life was destroyed. He was driven to attempt suicide. Imagine being this young innocent man who spent months in jail on remand, awaiting trial for a rape charge. He was accused of raping Ellie Williams multiple times and violently beating her. He is now on a fight for justice against the police because there was evidence at the time that it was impossible for him to have done these rapes because at one of the times of the allegations, he was actually in the back of a police wagon. And of course, the male had to attempt to smear me within this story. So the first thing we published was our first trailer. It was very evident from the start, things didn't add up with this case. And we were the only journalists harassed by the police under legislation of their COVID laws. We're on the M6, we're on the way to Barrow. There's been a developing story. A young girl put a statement out on Facebook showing horrific injuries and said how she's been groomed by gangs of Muslim business owners in the town. I've just met that man, I feel for him so badly. You can't have false allegations of rape against a man, that will destroy his life. My head's totally fried on this. I don't know what to think. Oh, my little legs. You're struggling. Yeah, Come party there. So who decides who the, who journalists are? You. The, well, the registers. No, they're not. Written, that's no, 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 being, they're not. That's what, that's what I'm being told. That no, but that's not the law. I, I could ask you: Is this essential what, for your job? You? Yeah, for your job. Yeah, of course it is. Okay. Why well, there's no, but there's, but there's no, but there's no crime here. If any other journalist is driving up here, are you going to pull them over, ask them who they work for, check their company, tell them you want to see a pass? We, we're stopping we're stop a, a lot of people today. We have been stopping a lot of people. How many other journalists just stopped today? Uh, you're the first one. <laughs> It was a great feeling as well to see a camaraderie, people coming together. The only thing again is the conflicting, conflicting accounts that I didn't expect to receive since I've been up here just shows how much more we've got to find out. There was obviously a lot more to this story. So I went back and met with members of the Muslim community. I want to say a thank you to them for opening their doors to me. Some of the men were the men who were alleged to have trafficked Ellie Williams. But some of the members of the Muslim community gave me information on actual paedophiles who had been operating in Barrow. They've since been convicted for their heinous crimes. First of all, I'm Tommy Robinson. Yep. You're a Muslim business, business owner. Yes, I am. You've agreed to meet with me. Yes. So I can ask you some questions. Of course. Can I ask, with developments in your town, Yes. I've just come to your shop. Yeah, yeah. And we couldn't come in the front entrance? No, you couldn't. I've had to board it up. Why have you had to board it up? 
due to the level of threats that we were receiving, due to all this that's come out on social media, I couldn't take any risk. And what's come out on social media from Ellie Williams? Yes. Do you know, did you know Ellie Williams? No, I did not. But I want the answers as well, as more than anyone else, to be honest, because at the end of the day, it's, it's tied my business into this and myself. So I want to get to the bottom of this and I want to know the truth. How's your, how has your life been ruined? What, how, what's changed for you? Well, what's changed for me? How long have me? you had this business? I've, we've had this business, well, Mithal has been running, what, 25, 30, between 20, I think about 27 years in this town. My parents first came here and they've made it to what it is now. And for it to see, for people who I've known all my life just to like look at me twice and think, is this person responsible for this? It's, it's hurting, really, it is hurting. None, no one has mentioned you personally yeah. involved in this. So how, how is it that your business, how is it you see that yourself has become in the middle of this? Oh, well, because I'm the face, me and my brother are the face of Mithali, yep. and they associate Mithali with me or my brother, okay. basically. And that's how I've become at the forefront. But the thing is, we're an organisation, we employ... We employed 15 people at one point. Okay. At the moment we can't because due to everything that's going on. You've been forthcoming. Yeah. I've Willi been open and honest. I've Willington. got nothing to hide, no. honestly. Um, and do you know what? Do you feel like you've faced trial by public opinion? Do you feel like you've already been... Do you think, feel like you've been you personally? Well, I would feel... I've been, yeah, I've been convicted of a crime that I genuinely haven't Of made. the worst possible. Yeah, it's horrible. I've got children on my own. Mm. You know, it's it's not, it's absolutely horrible. I've been receiving death threats over the phone. The, the, the vo uh, the calls that we've been receiving here, the it's just absolutely disgusting what people are saying. I can even show you what people. No, see, are see, saying. my 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 take on this is that this is to, well, you're in this position. Yeah. And if you're an innocent man, then and facing trial by public opinion, is is so wrong. Can you see? For us to contact you is, it's... That must be a big it, thing for you. Like, yeah. they, they, this must have been a... I'll be honest, when you first contacted me, I was... You remember what I said? Yeah, I, I do. Like, yeah, so I was completely struck. I was just like, wow. And for me to bring you here, it, it must speak volumes. Come on. It would, it would have been, as I said, it would have been easy for me to come up here. Yeah. Uh, and, and if it was the story was there that I thought it was, I'd be going full guns, 100, 100 miles an hour into justice for Ellie. But I'd say more this is about justice for Barrow. If you're an innocent business owner in Barrow. Cheers. No problem. We went to meet some of the men who were suspects in these crimes. The first of which was Mo Ramy. Mo Ramy has a past. He's a colourful character, to say the least. But we were there to determine the facts around the allegations of child trafficking that were against him, of which there was no evidence. Can we get... Just 30 minutes. I want to go find Ronnie and ask yeah, him a couple of questions. And then I want to film what they're doing. Yeah. And as soon as that's done, can I come back? And I want to film to say, I've just been up there. There's fucking 2,000 cars. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're one of the men behind the scenes. I promise you, yeah? My hand on, my, my hand on heart, I will ne not use anything or publicise anything that will risk that trial. Yeah. Nothing. I, I don't want to risk the trial. I, all I, wa I want to show, I want to be, it, when the truth comes out, I'll probably, my update won't be anything near like what it was going to be. If yeah, this is going away, it's just going to be, listen, I've been in Barrow. Yeah. I'm telling you, I'm meeting people. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have to wait for this to come out in court. Yeah. And, that, and, and I've go, I'll ask my solicitor what I can say, but I won't have to say much for everyone tonight's bullshit. That's good. I, 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 I won't have much to... No. That's not bullshit that she hasn't been abused. It's no, not bullshit. No, 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 it's not bullshit. No, no, no. It's not bullshit that she hasn't been a victim. Yeah. But... No. Men's lives are being destroyed at the same time here, and they have been for fucking yeah. many years. Yeah. And no one else's lives can be destroyed off trial by public opinion, yeah. which yeah. is currently what you're at. Yeah. We weren't the only people finding holes and questions within the story. Even the guy who set up the fundraiser for Ellie Williams then set up a contract to protect the money that had been donated. So just to establish, you're the guy that set up the fundraiser for the Justice for Ellie campaign. Yeah, that's me. Raising how much? It was 22 grand on the page, and then when it got passed over to me, because just giving through a little deduction, it's like processing cost, yep. was 21,211p, yeah. Your accent, you're not from Barrow? No. 
So, where are you from? I'm Essex. So, how did you, in the Justice for Ellie campaign, it was a local barrow? I've raised money for like a lot of people across, across the country, like loads of different areas. But I was, one of my mates, my mate Lucy shared the post. Yep. So I see it then, and then somebody tagged me in it about 20 minutes after that. So then I, I obviously, like le- reading the post, I just, I don't know, it was a bit heartbreaking. You see a girl that looks vulnerable, looks like she, well, she, she had been beaten. Yep. It looked like she'd been groomed. She had text messages to, to back it up as well, which was from the, allegedly from the grooming gang. Yep. So I approached the family, her brother, and just said, like, this is what I do, do you want some help? And they come back and said yes. At which stage did you start to question the story? Well, I believe they're all the way through. Yep. 2020 was when I set up the page. May, I think it was? No, April, May. I met the family in July, put a contract in place. And it was, I put a contract in place. I still believed her, but there was a couple of people messaging me saying she's made it up. They were clear, like, fake profiles, like two or three friends on their friend list and pic- profile picture of, like, a road sign. So okay. I can't take that as believable. Yep. But there was just that bit in me that was saying, right, let's protect everyone that donated. But, like, Protect everyone put a contract in place, which yep. stated that out of 21,200, they could use £1,200 for Ellie to get cancer in or therapy, they called it. But the 20 grand could only be used against bringing a private prosecution against the grooming gang, because they said, you know, there's a lot of police corruption, that's what they were telling me, and they will take their own private prosecution. And we spoke before the trial. You'd seen yeah. something I said. Yeah. And that's when you go in contact. So this is what this is where it changed. Yep. Somebody sent me something. Again, it was a fake profile, but it was actually a transcript from the court. Yep. I knew she was in court. I knew she'd been guilty of perverting the course of justice, but that was to explain to me that she was guilty for a very different reason because of she lied about her whereabouts because of the grooming gang forced her to. Yep. But it was around the 18th, 19th of December. I changed my mind. Somebody sent me something from the fake profile, and it was evidence of like transcripts of court. And it was to do with the hammer, okay. where she'd been seen in Tesco's buying this hammer, and then the hammer would be found near the scene where she was found. So then I read a lot more. I was reading it, like obsessing over it for days, and it come out other evidence about it wasn't just the hammer, the fake Snapchat accounts, yep. the fake Facebook profiles were all set up from her Wi Fi. Her phone? Yeah, it all come from herself. Um, Ibiza, she had come out, and when the police said about checking, flight records, she said that Ibiza was a liar. Her sister stood up in court, almost against her, just saying that she didn't leave her side in Amsterdam. And then there was the thing with the Blackpool Hotel. Yep. She'd been seen on CCTV. She said she was groomed that night and raped, but footage showed that she was in the hotel all night. And apparently she just left to get a pot noodle and then went back to the hotel. So there was that. It wasn't just one thing, it was many. Then I changed my mind. Let me ask you, you raised money, where's the money? With Ellie's mum. How long has it been with Ellie's mum? Uh, since about two, two months after I set up the page. Can I ask you about Maggie Oliver? Yeah. What's your, I've seen Maggie Oliver's name a lot in this campaign as well. Yeah. What's your involvement been with her? I've never met her. Um, no. I heard at the time. In your contract, was it that some of the money goes to her? Yeah, the first I heard of Maggie Oliver, that, that, that she was supporting the family. I don't know how true that is, but that's what I was told. She was supporting the family. Um, she's recently said in an interview that she, she wasn't, it was just, I don't know what it was, it was small contact. But she was one of the charities that were chosen in the contract. The family chose the two charities they would go to. Okay, so the family chose charities. One of them was Maggie Oliver, yep. £10,000? Yep, and £10,000 to Women's Community Matters in Barrow. Women, women's Community Matters in Barrow, and is, it, is there any link with that? And Well, <laughs> yeah, it's come out that Ellie's nan is a trustee of the charity, which caused a bit of... Great. Did they tell you that her family were linked with the charity when it was chosen on the... I asked a question about her mum and I was told it was she was like in the background, she'd done like volunteering or whatnot, but I never knew and I wasn't told that she was a trustee, no, because that, I've even asked that recently and I was told that she's not on the board of trustees, but then somebody sent me the company's house okay. transcript and she is, she's a trustee, yeah. So she hasn't been, they haven't been honest with you about that either? No. All of this accumulated in the need for me to speak to Ellie's family. The fact that they hadn't been honest with the public from the start. I confronted her stepfather, Ronnie, to put these allegations to him and to request that he be honest with the public as so much tension was building locally against what we now know to be innocent men. Is it, is it Ronnie? Yes, Ronnie, how are you? Can't keep two metres away. Yeah, sorry. Ronnie, you know everything that's going on? Two metres. 
Okay, you know everything that's going on? Yeah, they, yeah. How come the public haven't been told about the previous allegations? No comment. No comment? Yeah. Don't you think if there's a campaign that people should know the facts? Say if you speak to your wife and if she doesn't want... I, I promise I will not come and talk about this case again. We but we will, people, will, 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 will people be honest with the public about the, what Ellie is facing charges for? We can't speak to you about a live case. Because that puts us in contempt of court. About Ellie's case? About Ellie's case. You can? I can't. But, but, but what I mean is, so there's a campaign... We've spoken to our barrister but the and, and our QC. And we have, we have, we have but, been advised. but from the start, from the from the start of this campaign, the public have not been made aware of the men who have been falsely accused of raping Ellie. Well, we don't know what men it is, do we? I do. I found. I spoke to four of them. I spoke to a kid at school who was accused of raping her at school. You are sorry. I spoke to a kid who was accused during school right. of, of, of of rape of raping Ellie. Ellie. Right. So I spoke. I spoke to him. I spoke, I spoke to multiple. But what I mean is, none none of these people know that. Yeah. They probably should. Yeah. It is probably quite pivotal to what's gone on. And that's not to say, I want, she needs justice for whoever's caused those injuries to her. That's right, that's right. That's but, but, if there, but if there's been four men that have been lied about. Four men? Five. Like I said, I can't discuss that with you. Do you believe Ellie was raped by Jordan Ten Chengrove? Do you believe she that. was? Do you believe she was? You who's cannot. Jo who's Jordan Chengrove? Come on, man. Who's, who's John Trangle? You don't know who he is? No. If you really don't know who he is, I can give you an entire case to read where he was three times he was accused of raping her. Was he? Yeah, he was in prison for three months. He was in prison for three months. Can't help you with that, I'm afraid. He tried to kill himself a few really? months ago. Yeah. That's a shame. I don't know the reasons why she's previously blamed other men. I don't know. But I think that people should be made aware. Well, I don't know either, so I can't... Did you not know about that? No, sorry. You didn't, you, did, you, did you not have any prior knowledge to the, these accusations? Ellie, Ellie's over 18 years old and, and it was her wish that her parents, us, um, weren't told the um, details. So, so you don't know the details so, of this? So a lot of the stuff that is coming out now, we have only just found out ourselves. And that's in the past three weeks. So do you, okay, okay, do you, st do you still believe Do you know? I believe Ellie. She's my, she my stepdaughter. I've been with her for 17 years. So I have, and yeah. she's never lied to me before. I believe Ellie. Did she work at the Elephant? No comment. Ellie is in prison yeah. on remand for her own safety. Is that what they've said for her own safety? See, because that's not, I don't think that's true. Police officer um, Cummings yeah. spoke to me on the phone um, 10 days ago yep. and told me that he, that he, the police, asked the court to hold Ellie for her own protection. Okay. I believe Ellie. We as a family all believe Ellie. But I believe they'll absolutely crucify her and discredit her, and they're going to turn this whole thing. This is what I think they're going to do. We know the police are trying to discredit what Ellie's saying. And if they do that, this is going to affect grooming victims across the whole country being yes, believed, being believed, which is my, my concern massively is. Most revealing is what Ronnie could remember, dependent on if he thought the camera was recording or not. My main thing here is that there are so many contradictions. You can take the camera off. Turn the camera off in. There are so many contradictions that is so fucking damaging. Do the window up, bro. There's so many contradictions that I, I think will be so damaging to what I'd say is our cause of getting justice for grooming victims. I've read, when Ellie's asked how she gets her bruising from her friend at work, she said, my stepdad, Ronnie. I've read that in black and white. That's in a statement. It says, sorry, say that again. So, Ellie has told her friends yeah. that her bruising has come from you. Ah, right. All oh, right. Really? In black and white. I've read it. 
right. I've never been questioned on anything. Yep. Right? So, would you not think that if Ellie had accused me of doing those bruises, that the police would have at least come out? She hasn't accused you to, have, she's told her friends. I've read it, I've read her friend's statement. Ellie, but somebody, somebody who is abused um, would tell lies to cover up the real story of what has actually happened. And she's, she would look for anybody to blame, whether that be, I've walked into a cupboard, walked into a door, I fell over, yeah. that their Ronnie's done it. I've had bet, I, I know where you're coming, I know where you're, the way you are with this, because, because because she hasn't ben just phoned me, Ben phoned me last year. Ben, Ben. Ben, my brother. brother. Yeah. Phoned, phoned me last year and said, he said to me, um, what's going on at home? And I said, hey, what do you mean, Ben? Well, Ellie's turned up the work <coughs> with a black that? guy. What's happening? Ellie's turned up the work with a black guy. Um, and she's telling telling everybody Did that you? um that they've you done it. Yeah, that's you. Yeah. And I said, no, I didn't do it. I said, not to speak to your mum. Not there, why would I do it? Not that I'm not like that. Not there, why would I do it? So Ellie's told some un untruths to cover up what is that's actually a, happening to her. Yeah. And that and, and that What she what she what she what, what she told you what, what she when you've say say she's got a black eye. Get your floor first. Yeah yeah Sam sorry. Yeah, no worries, you're right. Massive fan. Did you know if she worked at the elephant? Um, no, she didn't. She didn't? No. She's never worked there? No, she hasn't. Did she work at the elephant? No comment. No. See, as like, I said. Why I'll, do you ask me that, though? Because she's, I've heard she's worked at, she worked at the elephant, which makes sense as to where she met Mo Rami. No. Rubbish. No. No. I think she said that in her statement. Ellie's first job. Yeah, Ellie's first job would be um, at the railway. I do know Jordan Tangrove, actually. Yeah. Right. Do you do you believe Ellie was raped by Jordan Tang Tangrove? Do you believe she that. was? Do you believe she was? You who's cannot. Jo who's Jordan Tangrove? Come on, man. Who's Who's Jordan Tangrove? You don't know who he is. No. Yeah. So I do. You know Jordan. Yeah. 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 Not, not, not personally. But you know of the story. Or I know of them. Do you know of the story? Yeah, because it was in the newspaper last year. So what do you think of that? If she, if she, if she, if he didn't rape her, yeah. If he didn't, yeah. Then how dangerous is this? Did you know his girlfriend was arrested today and charged? Yeah, for naming Ellie. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Ellie said. Ellie said he's the man. But I don't know. I. Oh, I know. I I, 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 know it, okay, this I'm. Is, I'm telling you. Telling me I'm this. telling you. One hundred percent. I'm telling you. That Mo, her statement says that Mo Rami has groomed her since the age of 13. She took him to, he took her to 10 cities. He's, he's not raped her, but he drops her off and traffics her to parties. Mo Rami. So you know Mo Rami, do you think that's true? Um, I've only ever once spoken to Mo Rami. Oh, okay. Because you know, cause say, say for example, this is the thing. Say like Jordan Trangrove's life's been destroyed. His life's been destroyed. Yeah? Another boy's life's been destroyed. Yeah. Now, if it's a lie, yeah? Yeah. But if it's been proven a lie, that's why they're prosecuting her. Yeah. Yeah? So they have evidence it's a lie, yeah? Against yeah. Jordan. Now, maybe she's under duress to say it was Jordan. Maybe she's lied and blamed it on Jordan because she doesn't want to reveal who's abused her. What? Maybe, yeah? But that's the same possibility that maybe Mo Rami hasn't fucking done it. Or maybe it did happen. Um, and the word that we have heard is that Jordan Trangrove's mum <laughs> threatened to kill Ellie. No, I've gone through all the court papers and I, I, I've, I've read I've read it all, but I'm telling you, I've read it. It was not kicked out because of that. It's not kicked out because Ellie, did, Ellie didn't turn up. It was kicked out of court because of no evidence, zero evidence. Yeah. It was kicked out of court. And not just because of zero evidence, but because there was actually evidence that says it was fabricated. So somebody, somebody wouldn't be put in prison on, on remand if the police didn't have any evidence. No, oh, no, they've got evidence, that's what I mean. Yeah. So, so the yeah. evidence is there that, that something did happen. The, no, yeah, oh, oh, him. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah the evidence that they, they had was a Snapchat account from Jordan, which after their forensic accountants checked it, forensics turned out it was on Ellie's phone. Mm. 
wasn't Jordan's phone. So there was a Snapchat account in Jordan's name that was made on Ellie's phone. And you have two Snapchat accounts, yeah? Yeah, so she, she, she set up, so basically, it looks like she set up a Snapchat account on her own phone in Jordan's name and sent herself messages from Jordan that fits it, that makes it look like he's threatening her. So when they've took Jordan's phone and took her's phone, they've obviously thought it's Jordan. Look, evidence, look, rape. And then bang, three months later, once they've gone through all the stuff and actually checked, fuck. Well, you know more than I do. And as agreed, after speaking to Ellie's stepfather, we returned to Mo Rami's house to hear his side of the story. Suppose to Ronnie, I said to him, I said, Ronnie, I said, you don't want me to be involved. Your family don't want me to be involved. I'll happily go home tomorrow and not talk about this case again if you'd be honest with people about what's happened. And I said, what's gone on with previous rapes? And he said, no comment. He said, crazy, no, isn't it? He said, no comment. Absolutely crazy. But then I said, if... I asked him, I'm going to have to run back through the footage. I think he denied knowing about you, but then later on admitted knowing about you. But they've known me for years. I used to no, three, no, bottle, no, three no, bottles no, of wine, but they just no, come no, back because no, of the old friend thing. I think I, I, I said to him, do you know who the five people are? Do you know any of the five people? I'm pretty sure I'll have to watch back because we spoke for a while. He denied knowing any. But then at the end then, when you were, when I was at the car talking, I think he told me then that he might know about Mo Rami. But he didn't know anything. Well, if, no, he's put it up. Where do you think it's screenshots when I was in Holland? Yeah. He just put it up. I can't talk about it. This man is involved in blah, blah. I can't say because I'm working. Where's like my phone? I can give you screenshots. I can give you screenshots. But then I did ask him at the end then. So the, at the end for me, it's like, listen, okay, so Jordan's life's been destroyed. Yeah. yeah. Because of an accusation. Yeah. I said, what if Mo Rami hasn't done it? Yeah. He hasn't done it. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. He hasn't. Oh, he hasn't. It. What if? What if he's not? But my name's been slandered everywhere. Yeah. It's like social, social, uh, like you yeah. said earlier, social justice and social trial by social, trial, social trial, media. Trial by public opinion. Yeah. Public opinion. You know, like what I said to the dad is is true. So if Jordan didn't, if Jordan, if we're to believe what's happened, then someone at school raped Ellie, another boy called Jordan beat her up and raped her, another man's raped her. And now a Muslim gang have, have raped her across all these towns. Now, now, yeah. now, yeah. Apparently, are these alleged accusations now with no. these photos that have been released on social media, yeah. it's, yeah. Which have only come out after she's been charged. Yeah. yeah. Or met you two lads who have, you said about it, he's in college locally. Yeah. He's fucked. He's fucked, yeah. Yeah. Fuck. He's fucked. Well, he's at, he's at, he's at, he's at, he's eldest one has killed him last year. Yeah. You know, cause look at, you look at your father. As an yeah. idol, not you. Yeah, your father's always the threat. It's the idol, isn't he? Mm -hmm. And your father's going through these accusations. Yeah, it's how, how it's not nice, is it? Mm -hmm. It's horrible. And essentially, it's the reason that you have guilty without reasonable doubt mm -hmm. in a court of law. It's because if there's a reasonable doubt, then someone's not guilty. And there's a fucking reasonable doubt from the first spot of... Well, from, since I've come up here, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Every day, I keep looking at that and saying... What's going on? Yeah, but that, that's... Well, until, until today, yeah. until today, yeah. I had no idea that you were one of the five people. But yeah, my name's plastered everywhere. I had no... Let me, I don't need my fucking left in the car. So I, I, I read, which is where... Have I read it or is it here? No, I left it in the car. Obviously, your name's plastered everywhere because of him. Yeah, he employed him, yeah. We spoke earlier, you didn't get this. Do you want to explain that? Well, yeah, he, yeah. through the town, everybody knows... Ten years, I've, I've, ten years I've been here. I've, been, I've had businesses. Always worked for me on and off. Ten years. Where's he from? What's he? Uh, Leeds originally, right? Uh, he was here before I was here, okay. right? The they owned the Aisha's Takeaway or something. They had a few takeaways. I think I could open up the restaurant. I employed him on and off. When I had wine bars, I had Italians. I've had all sorts, right? and I've had him work on and off. He, when I got the ice cream ones three years ago, the I employed him as a driver because my son was underage, he couldn't drive at the time, and he was working on one of the vans. The police come to us. We were at the unit working at the workshop, and CID came and said, the, this gentleman here in question is, uh, what's the word, Accusation, accusations have been made, allegations have been made, we want you to be aware because of... Uh, Do you know how many people so, allegations so, were made by? Uh, one girl. At the time, they said, but they can't tell me who it was or anything. Obviously, there's a girl that's been uh, accusing. I said, so what are the accusations? But they said the safeguarding issues is an ice cream. It's under. Then obviously, I'm not stupid. I got that underage and all that. It goes, yeah, this. Well, it's under investigation. I went, fair enough. Uh, 
pulled the lad in. When somebody's worked for you for 10 years, you have a bit of trust in them, you have a bit of faith in them, you rented one of your properties. I told you that earlier. 22 cylinders. Yeah. Uh, what's with somebody's got a smashed up? There you with your house. Has anyone um, done anything here? Yeah. Well, somebody tried to throw a brick yeah, here, but it's windows, windows, windows smashed the window. The exhaust of the ice cream van. Yeah. Death threats. Death threats. Nails in. Oh, we've had nails, nails in, in every, every car. Every, yeah. Porsche. I, Porsche guy. I don't bring it up here no more. Got scratched. Cayenne. Yeah. 40 grand water. Crash. Where is Porsche? Huh? Where is well, I've, I've, I've taken it to my sister's. Yeah. You know, it's just scratched all the oh, way around so the side. It's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I, and yeah. I've not done anything wrong. So him. So yeah, so, so go back to him. Yeah, sorry. Can I ask, though, well, why are you showing a picture of him? Because is he one of the accused for Ellie Williams? I would say he's not. So why are we even asking about him? I believe he's in trial. For what? For grooming. You believe uh, Historical. But not to do with this girl. No, and I'm trying well, to picture, I'm trying, picture, I'm trying, I'm trying, trying to picture of him because the reason why the reason why your right, name right, the right, right, reason why everyone says your name he's got a paedophile he's, he's got a paedophile on his ice cream. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. He's got he's got a paedophile. Yeah, well exactly like I said, the police two CID officers came. I can't remember the names. We've got the cards somewhere. And they came and they said to me we want to talk to you regarding him. You employing him away, yeah? They went, There's this issue. Uh, will he be on the van on his own? I went, no. They told me a certain thing. I said, what do you advise me to do? Shall I get rid of him? They went, no. Yeah. Right? He's innocent no, he's innocent proven until guilty. proven guilty. I went, is there a case? They said, well, the girl that's making the accusations known to the police. How long ago was this? Uh, <coughs> God, about three years? Two years? Three years ago. We're still at the unit, 2017. Yeah, 2017. <laughs> yeah, from what, from what I believe it's only just going to court. Cost what? No, I'm not. Yeah. 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 It's only. Yeah. 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 Because that's why your name's out there, yeah? Yeah, that, 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 because of that. That, that was it. That's why it's out But there. I did everything that the police advised me of, and when it got too out of hand, I went for all the. Facebook and all the shit that used to come and affected them. And I went to the police myself. I went on numerous occasions. I went to the police. Mm -hmm. uh, and I sat with that inspector, Jim Bailey, which not a lot of the, this hasn't been documented by the police, which I think is totally wrong. I think he should have documented it. There should have been logs of this, me and my partner. I took in my children. I took in uh, one of my English drivers, 60 year old driver with my son. Van got attacked. Thinking, uh, well, some words were coming out packy, some were coming out pedos, bit of both it was. But it's kids, isn't it? You can't, what do you do? I did a, just a community resolution thing with them. And at the end, the police officer, the inspector Jim Bailey goes, you know what, oh, why did you just put him on there? Take him off front line. That's what his words were. I was like, hang on, one minute you're saying it's all right, then it's not a clear message you're sending me. You know, why can't you give me a clear message? I, I'm a very well-known person in this community. And it was just like, oh, we know this and that, but uh, it's, not, it's not real and it's not. They weren't, they, they tell you something, but they didn't, they, they didn't act uh, professionally in the sense of you know, safeguarding. There was such a safeguarding concern. They, they didn't act, no. Yeah, and that's how, and that's how I did then. Him, then at the, yeah, at the end, we made the decision. I thought, you know what, we're getting that. a lot of shit. We don't need this shit out of doorstep. Somebody else did it. Oh, that, sorry, mate. You know, you've know, you got a kid, you're going through hard time, whatever. It's not my problem no more. You know, fuck off. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I saw, I saw active. I've just realised something. Wow. You're... <clears throat> you and Nick when? You and Nick when? when, when? So, so just... We, we're going to have to go over this because we talked about earlier. Yeah. In July last year, yeah. you were arrested yeah. for allegations by Ellie Williams yeah. of grooming her. Or not... Not, not of rape. Uh, no, I don't, no, no, human trafficking. Not of raping her. No, so no, 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 no. Of taking her to different towns and cities. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, over which, how, over what, how long of a period? Uh, apparently, apparently, the only thing that I got told it first happened when she was 13 and she worked for me in the elephant. She's never worked for me in the, in the elephant. I didn't even know her when she was 13. Um, I just, I asked Ronnie if she ever worked in the elephant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What did he say? Yeah. No. Thank you very that's much. That's I fact. asked Ronnie. Yeah, said her and that's in the police statement. She said how she started, how she met him, was yeah. working for him yeah, at the I elephant. Right, so let me read you this statement. There's a date on this statement. I've cut off the date, and I fuck's sake. Let me read you this. This is from Jordan's case, which I need to get a date for. This was put to Williams as she made immediate 
immediate denial and appeared to noticeably react for the first time since we arrived. Officers have attended the address of this male and determined he was not involved. Whilst inquiries were made in, in, into the male called Josh, Williams had become angry at the suggestion that officers would be, would be attending his address and had started to text on her phone. I've been concerned that she was contacting Josh to warn him of police attendance and have said this to her. Williams has denied this and then handed her phone over to prove she was texting a female called Becca Hunter. PC Gray has then asked Williams about some names mentioned in messages on the phone. Williams has mentioned that some messages have been screenshot and sent to others uh, previously. I've then looked at the photo albums on the phone and noticed the thumbnail of messages, which has been the screenshot folder marked deleted. I've immediately seen a series of messages which have been sent to Williams, along with photographs of several injuries which she has suffered, including serious bruising to her arms, face and body, along with injuries to her lip and fingers. There have also been a series of screenshot messages from Snapchat, primarily from a username Rami. These appear to indicate that Williams has been the victim of frequent sexual and physical abuse at the hands of several persons. Most of the messages were abusive towards her and her being sexually assaulted, stating, you've got AIDS now and you were fucked by eight men. Some of them had the clap. Now you've got it. And things of that nature. The messages from the male Rami were very, very controlling and abusive and indicated again Williams may have been the victim of sexual abuse at his hands. And that's what she had on the phone. No, this is a police officer statement. Yeah? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. From this is a police officer who's took her phone. Now, obviously, you'd you'd be on trial. Yeah. If the police, that was true. if the police had took this phone. Yeah. And these are your Snapchat messages. I don't even have Snapchat. Never had Snapchat. I, I did have it when I said to you earlier. I had it when it first come out, and I yeah. couldn't figure it out, and that's it. I've never had it since. So you've been nicked, questioned. Yeah. Raided. Yeah, twice. Phone taken? Her phones, laptops, her computers, work computers, uh, every, kids, people, oh, phone, previous nice. phones, you know, the old phones, broken ones in their house, everything. Sure. Everything. Everything. I mean, wife's lingerie, her bloody, her, her stuff got taken, the car got taken. This was all turned into a piece of journalism that could have educated the public on the truth. And people would have listened locally because it was me that was saying it. And of course, some leftists had to ruin it all. I'm all right. Do you know, um, you're a racist piece of shit. <laughs> Good one. Yeah. Well done. Hmm? What do you think of the rapes that are happening in this town? The rapes? Yeah. I think they're awful. Do you? But you can't blame the singular race. Who, who blamed a singular race, dickhead? Me. When did I blame a singular race? When? Yeah, go on. I'm not saying you blame the races. When did I blame a singular race? Do you know what a race is? Yes. What's a oh, race? Oh, a religion? Yeah. So I blamed a religion, I blamed a book for raping girls today. Is that it? Have you, have you come to do anything? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Good, what are you going to do? <laughs> you fucking little prick. <laughs> fucking little prick. You fucking mug. Spit at me, you fucking... You think you're fucking spit at me, bruv? Fucking prick. Fucking... What are you looking at? Don't, don't do that, don't do that. You fucking little bitch. Get your fucking ass up before I fucking do you. Yeah, yeah, you've made, yeah, well done. Well yeah. done, go on, mate. What, are you gonna, are you gonna, you gonna do anything else? Spit at me again, spit at me again. Spit at me again, spit at me again. Spit at me again, you spat in my face. Who the fuck do you think you are? Who spits at people? Spit at me again. No, you won't, will ya? You fucking little mug. I'm not, I'm not, look at you talking like you're soft as fuck. You spat in my face. You spat in my face. You spat in my face. You, you learn, you just learn, you learn a lesson in life, didn't you? Don't fucking spit at people, you little tramp. Fucking tramp. Spreading hate crime, you just come up and spat in my face. Don't talk to me about hate. After you started oh. having a go about uh, Muslims. No, you had a go. You called me a racist. Yeah. I said, who am I racist against? You just learned a lesson in life. Don't fucking mouth off when you can't handle it. Take your sorry fucking ass and fuck off. You fucking bitch. Me, I know, go on. Fucking little mug. Look at your bike tyre, look at your face, yeah? Do you think it's acceptable you just spat in my face? No. So what do you think he was doing? What, at what point did you think that's a good idea? And that's a re... Do you probably think yourself as a reasonable person? Yeah. Going up spitting in people's faces in car parks? Reasonable? Hit you, oh, What's that? You spat at me, you did it, me! That is a police assault. You spat... No, but listen, assault. shush. Do you think that's a reasonable? Do you think your behaviour is reasonable? It's reasonable to run over me with a car. Who ran you over a car? No, bike. they didn't. Look, what's that? Mate, you come up to me, you, you come up to me, did you not? You call me a racist and then you spat in my face.
Mate, you, you fucking... Film me, you don't have permission to film me. You do, you're in the public, mate. Yeah, but I mean, you can't publicly... I'm going to put that online. You're famous, mate. You are. You've committed assault. You've, you've come up and spat in my face. You're going to be on TV. Everyone's going to see you. Do you think I wanted to punch you up? Do you think I want to just be in a car park punching and fighting people? Do you do you? Do you, know, and do, you know, and do you know you say I'm a racist, bruv? He's still two metres away. Stay, stay two metres away, you just spat at me! You're worried about coronavirus, you just spat at me! <laughs> you're fucking talking about coronavirus! You, you spat at you're me, me bruv! You spat in my face! Wrong camera, do we? You yeah, spat the whole lot. Come on. Anyway, see you later. Mate, I hope you learn your lesson today. On your bike, son. Spitting over there. In a black car. You said she was mate in a black car. If I get enough phlegm in my mouth now, I'll go over there and I'll spit it. And I said, no, you fucking won't. I said, that's fucking damn right. You, you heard him say it? I heard him yeah. say it. Yeah. I shouted to him. Hey, I tell you I what. I said, 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 I and I'll tell you about it, I've got an Asian grandson yeah, yeah. and my daughter was with an Asian lad and mm. she was with him a few years. They split up because he was accused ages ago. Oh, God. Oh, who, the, the Havana? Yeah, What's your well, grandson? The one with, no, I'm not going to give you any names. No, 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 no. no. Well, do you know, because you know what'll happen here? I oh, know I'll get nicked, yeah, but I'm gonna. Oh, you're gonna get nicked, fine, I witnessed it. That's I all I want. Yeah, I thank you. Do it. Send it to my house, I'll give you my address. Can I have your name? Yeah. Cheers. I'm just gonna tell me, please, uh, hello? Oh fuck, I'm getting nicked. Oh. Okay, yeah, I can see it, but they're asking for me. Yeah, someone's reported the incident. Oh. Don't tell them I'm in here. Video, please go. <laughs> they want to speak to me. Chet, Chet, just tell them, just tell them what the dude done. Oh, I'm getting nicked. It's never a fucking duck. <laughs> do you like it? You like it? Welcome to Barrow. No, but the geezer spat in my face. I did want to punch you out. Punch out, yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's self defense. Yeah, it is self defense. Self defense. Self defense. Self defense. Um, well, it's cheers. ridiculous. It's, they're welcome to Barrow. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you're, the barrow. you're getting called a nonce as I, I walk out. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. no, did you get yeah. that? Some girl <laughs> just pulled up as I walked in, screamed racist at me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, don't let them know I'm in here. Yeah, cheers. I'm in your back. Oh, it's hideous. Don't no, I just, just, I just want, it's horrible. It's, it's just oh, ridiculous. It's relentless. It's relentless. relentless. Um, I'm going to get nicked. In fucking Barrow. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Don't come out. <laughs> Don't come out. <laughs> get nicked. <laughs> We'll just, we'll, we'll get him, we'll get him. We'll smuggle you out the back. <laughs> we'll smuggle you out the back, Tony. Tony, Tony, Tony. I've got a spare room. <laughs> I told you you were staying here tonight, didn't I? I told you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get down for that, I can't get down for that, can I? Maybe I punched him too many times. It was a uh, self defence. It is a self defence because he spat at me, but then. Did he spit at you? Did he physically punch it? Right, no, then you will get it done. And then I'll punch, punch it. Yeah, no, that's not. No. No. We should have made him, you should have spat at him and made him go for you first. No, because that's my deploy, that. <laughs> I'm taking a piss. Oh, I can't be doing with it. I'm tell my missus. It's the worst phone call that I ever love. Yeah, <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't me, though. It wasn't. <laughs> you, you're on, mate. You're on, mate. Nope. What are you being nicked for? What are they placing under arrest for? Oh, I've got a BC with What are they nicking you for? Undercover. Online. Online. That's ridiculous, isn't it? They've been nicked. They've both been arrested. You're under arrest for Section 4. What's Section 4 public order causing fear to people? What did what cause the car from when he they all jumped out? All right, mate. It's all of us. Done. Have you ever been nicked? <laughs> I'll be there. Let's turn the camera around on you, Aaron, in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> have, you <ever> <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been nicked? Hey, have you ever been nicked? Welcome to the team. <laughs> 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 He's only worked for me for a week. Oh, God! Fuck! Oh, 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 oh
I'm just working. That's no, it. Yeah, yeah. but you can't get nicked. Not fucking well, they well, might, hey, they well. might nick us all, bro. So, I went to Barrow. I was investigating child rape. Um, I actually now have bail conditions. I'm not allowed to talk about anything to do with child sex with sexual exploitation within Cumbria. Go figure. So basically, we were arrested by the police. I was then given bail conditions not to enter Cumbria. Couldn't talk or investigate anything further. I couldn't even contact, I was given a long list of names of people I couldn't contact in Barrow to investigate. Which is why we couldn't publish anything until now. I love living in a free country. Of course, the trial went ahead and the public have now found out everything that we knew two years ago. Ellie Williams is a liar. Of course, leftists jumped on this opportunity to claim that I was a snake and just doing this for money. Whereas in reality, I was there to report the truth to all of you. Stephen Lennon, aka Tommy Robinson, ran with Ellie Williams' grooming claims and in the process vilified the Muslim community in Barrow. Realising she lied, Lennon has tried to tow back, pretending he never believed her. But he can't undo what he did. I've never heard such rubbish in my life. You weren't saying this when you were barking your racist nonsense through a megaphone and demanding I explain myself. Were you, Tommy Robinson? What a load of nonsense this is. And I do have the evidence of what you said and did at the time. I never had a megaphone. I never done any of this. When asked to produce the evidence, guess what? Oh, I'm not going to produce it. I'm not. <laughs> it's, it's like everything. Accusations after accusations. I've asked this local journalist to produce it. But of course, she can't. That's if she's not too busy being a coked up smear merchant. A high-profile Cumbrian journalist has been charged by police with possession of Class A drugs and driving while under the influence of drugs. Amy Fenton, the chief reporter at the Mail in Barrow, is due before magistrates next month. Neil Smith has more. Amy Fenton was arrested on the evening of the 6th of March, having been stopped by the police on the M6 northbound near Junction 36. The 35-year-old from Dalton in Furness has now been charged by Cumbria Police of being in possession of cocaine, a Class A drug, and with driving a motor vehicle whilst unfit through drugs. Worst of all is this government politician. Soon the vultures who make their money and reputations out of others' misery appeared. The far right were the most obvious, with Tommy Robinson whipping up tension still further in pursuit of justice being the icing on the cake. Soon my surgeries were peppered with families who had been torn apart by the allegations made against them and local people who feared for their and their children's safety due to the colour of their skin. This was unbearable. This is pure libel. Amazingly, all the libel is against me. Someone who actually went there to truthfully investigate and find out what had gone on. Not against Maggie Oliver, who was aware that it was a false claim but still continued to pump this story. With Ellie now convicted and each of the men's names cleared, we sat down again with Mo Rami, the alleged leader of the grooming gang, to see how life for his family has changed. Mo, it's good to see you. Nice to see you again, Tommy. Looking at your T-shirt. Let's, let's, you've, you've gone. I was the leader of an international sexual auction grooming gang, and all I got was this lousy T-shirt. Justice for Barrow <laughs> Boys. <laughs> it, all right. you, you've been cleared. Indeed I have. Have you, do you feel your ta name's totally been cleared? No. No? No. Do you feel, is there still a, rumour mill around the town that this is still a cover-up. Yes. Yeah, I think what, there's a lot more this, justice this, this needed. This is what this lady's done. Yeah. This is what this lady's done. She's you know you're wearing this. Is this your way? Because because when I met you at your house, yeah. when I heard what, how you've behaved in response to these accusations, it's sort of like, it's me. It, it reminded me of myself. It's what I'd do. I'd think, no, fuck you. Like, fuck you. Like, so, and, and you're wearing this. You're smiling. You're laughing, yeah? Yeah. Let's get, a, a, I want to get behind, away a, behind that. Because it is that a front that you put on? That's that it is. Because in reality, what has happened to your family? It, yeah, we it, can, you're sitting there laughing, smiling now. You're probably feeling happy, but I've, I've met your family. Yes. I, met you, I looked at your sons. Yes. Then what's it been like for them? It's been hell. Yeah. How, been old hell. You, how old are your boys? My, my boy now, at the time, eldest was 18. Yeah. That self-harmed. I went to, do, I went to put him into an asylum to get him help. They were the time he got arrested and done for drink dri uh, driving. I phoned the police on him, and you know what the police did instead? Yeah. The eight of them turned up to my house instead of going get my son. When you ran them? Uh, when I ran them, they turned out to go and get me instead. Fifteen miles, twenty miles down the road, when I told him what direction they're taking, where he is, 
Newby Bridge, that's where the fucking police went and got him. Instead, they sent eight coppers to my house and I committed suicide. That day, in front of my children, I smashed a bo uh, bottle on my head. I've got the scars there, Jack. I'll shave my head. I'll show you, bro. I've got the scars. I was going to slice my neck. All that kitchen you see, I'm Nicola, my mate Jonathan, he was there. If he didn't grab my hand that day, I was a goner. I would, I would have gone right in front of my children and my wife, man. That's the fact of it. That's so that's, head, that's what it's fucking done. Your head was gone. Yeah, it went pop. Yeah, so that was one part time it went gone. pop. Yeah. And that was in 2019. Can you just read that out? Do you read that out loud? Stephen Lennon, a.k.a. Tommy Robinson, ran with Ellie Williams, grooming claims, and in the process, vilified the Muslim community in Barrow. Re releasing, uh, releasing, she lied, Lennon has tried to talk back, pretending he never believed her, but he can't undo what he did from Nick Lowell's. Yeah, Nick Lowell's. Right. What do you make of that? I think that's bullshit. To be honest with you, I've had my opinion about you, Tommy. I've said that many a times before to you. Yeah, As you would, I've talked a lot no, about your, your religion. Yeah, you know, that's fair enough. But you, as a man, I've said it behind your back, and I'll say it in front of your face, and I'll say, I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got ridiculed from my own Muslim community, the further afield, that I let you in my house. Okay. Right? I've had shit for that, yeah, yeah. from my own. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I still put that aside. I've had it from your family, you know? <laughs> from your wife's family. Your wife's family, why? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Probably the white family give it worse than the Muslim the family. family. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and then, uh, and then yeah. I took, you know what? Before you come in, I'm going to give you just two minutes in this. Yeah, yeah, Before you come in, my children asked me, Dad, how do we treat him? Yeah. I said to him, like any guest that will walk into our house, mm -hmm. what if they're your enemy, when they come to your door, this is our teachings, this is my, my father raised me. When they come to your door, somebody comes to your door, you treat them as a guest. Yeah. You come in, and you know what I will say, that whether people say you're a journalist, you're not a journalist, you did it professionally. You did what you said to stand power to do, you did it right. I ain't blowing smoke up your ass. No, no, no. I'm being straight with you, man yeah. to man. Yeah. Right? And I was at the darkest point of my life, mate. I was at the bottom, bottom of the place that you can be. It's the worst thing any man can actually oh, burden. Yeah, I can't so, imagine. Bro. You know what I mean? It's, it's right. And then the way it got plastered all over the internet, all over the social media. Everywhere you walked. Everywhere right? I walked, man. I knew I'd have put eyes on back of my head. Mm. You know what I mean? And it wasn't nice. It isn't nice. And you, especially when you get children and your businesses. And then I had to, sh we had to hide thinking. But coming back to that, it's no. I think I've got respect for you, mate, in the level that you dealt with me, yep. right? And you were, you, d you did what you said to do. And you were an honest man. And I think I would, you know, I'd invite you to mind any day. My job was just to find the truth. Truth, do you know what I mean? So I was just doing my job. And I think you, and you, and you were the first one that actually did it. Yeah. And you would have been the first one if it was actually true to bring me down as well. Yeah, yeah. I believe that. Yeah. Like, the way you did it, you were doing thorough. You, yeah. And you, you do do thorough. Now, and they were letting me, and, and they, the fact that they didn't let me put anything out, Man, it carried on for so long. So long. And you could have, you know what? I could have ended it. You could have ended it. I know. You could have ended it. And I was You know what? I, I said to my missus and kids, you know what? I look at you sometimes and yeah. think, you're the Malcolm X of the white people of England. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you that. <laughs> you, you, you know what I mean? You, you, you There's a lot of people going to be upset with hearing that. You don't know that. Yeah. There's a lot of people going to be pissed off with hearing that. <laughs> no, but you know what you say? No, in a sense of having the following. He said it. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 I'm just glad I can sit and laugh now. Because I've cried yeah. for so long. And I put that big exterior on, I put a big face on. It's an on. exterior. I, it is I exterior. knew that when I walk out of your house. You know, you, I said, you can, act as, you can act as brave, you can be as funny and laugh, but I know what's going on. Going on behind you. Doors. you did. And, but I have to do that to protect my family, bro. Of and protect my name, protect my heritage, protect me. Mm -hmm. right? and, I, and I did. And there's, there's nothing, I, like, come on. I've, like I've said, I'm no angel. Who is? You know what I mean? Neither am I. Yeah. You know As I mean? they keep reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen my Wikipedia page? No, 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 no. <laughs> what are you working on? All right. Uh, partner. Where's this go from now? Now, this you? goes now is basically we're setting up the Holt Trust. The what? Holt Trust. What's Holt stand for? Holt is my father, Nicholas Cerny. Okay. Nicholas Holt, yeah, okay. Uh, of course. Yeah. Yep. And the Holt Trust, her and her friends. I didn't know how my wife was were affected till after the convictions. We have all actually started healing now. Me, my children, everybody kept secrets, bro. Everyone, you know, she went and cried to her friends. <clears throat> Put on I, I, face I, family. Yeah, family. I'm crying on my own. Yeah. The boys are crying on their own, but to be united, that's what gives us the strength. 
you know, all of the whole thingy. That's given us the strength, bro, to be able to, you know, and but we all we all su suffered. We all suffered, and you know, and the friends have been there, and they've already got together. You know what? We weren't given no support. There was zero. I just didn't got zero support and any counselling or any help from the council, the police, anything. We have a children, man. We have boys, man. It's unfair, man. The good, well mannered lads. No, I met them. Yeah, we're wonderful lads, man. When I met them, they were very polite, very nice. I remember the first time I saw you. I was hiding out the back of your ice cream bag, <laughs> I think he said, "What the fuck do you want?" <laughs> That's what he said. What the fuck do you want? <laughs> you didn't, did you? <laughs> well, bearing in mind, you must have felt under attack from everywhere. And then Tommy Robinson's popping out from behind your ice cream van. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just me. I think about putting a picture of you on that one. <laughs> I, saw your son, I saw your son as well. Oh. And I tried to assure you. That it was horrible, man. <laughs> I'm just here. You know, you laughed laugh through it, but I have to. And I'm, like, I'm that type of guy. I took it on head on. Because I've got nothing to hide. Are you going to stay in Barrow? I, I always said, we were always going to stay in Barrow till we, we've got a duty of care on our parents. My parents passed away in this ordeal. 2017, I lost my dad. 2021, I lost my, my, my mother. Right? So your mother didn't get to see you cleared? No. You know how, but you know what her last, last prayer was? Mm. Her last blessing to me, I said, that on the last day I was spoke to her. Honestly, I said to her mum, I said, I'm under a lot of pressure. She was held me head, gave me a massive kiss. And it's probably the longest hug of my life. Right, and that was it. She goes, it'll all be all right. It'll all be all right. And these so-and-sos put me through hell. I couldn't even, I couldn't, I've not grieved. I've not grieved for losing Nicholas' father. I was close to him. I, I lost my nephew, the knuckle druggers, the knuckle draggers were punched. My nephew, outside my shop, I've got a video of it, he died in an M1 car crash last year. They punched so they punch your nephew over all this? Yeah, over all this, called him a pedo, and I bought him from Bolton to start up the ice cream business, man. He wasn't, he, he wasn't even there for a month, and the, the, the fucking, and he was a big lad, but just a giant haystack, but soft at heart, bro. He, his heart, you know, he was just a gentle giant, and them bastards punched him. Right, and they, they got away with it. They got away with it. There was an independent witness as well. They got away with it. Grasses. And CCTV. And CCTV. Grasses, mate. Grasses. <laughs> Do you think I can forget that? No, I can't. I can't. You know, oh, last August, M1, seven car pilot. Car crash. How old? At 23 years of age. Oh, bro. Set him up in his own business, recoveries. You know, my sister, and he was the eldest son. Uh, <sighs> In the midst of it all, midst of it all. Your dad we lost in 21. Yeah. And then the kids be moved and moved. You know, he, he didn't see uh, my name get cleared. You know, he said to Nicola, don't bring a coloured man home or a scouser. <laughs> what did she do? <laughs> don't bring, don't bring, bring a coloured man or a scouser. Your, your dad? Yeah. <laughs> or a scouser. <laughs> or a, or a scouser. <laughs> they thought I was Italian as well. <laughs> <laughs> then they changed it to Italian. Then the worst thing was to see the coloured man. <laughs> I found out some mad. You know, like Ellie. Ellie, I walked into. We, we walked out of Mafali, didn't we? And um, and some lad pulls up and goes, "Yes, Tommy." I said, "All right, mate. How you doing?" He goes, "Oh, fucking hell. Let me talk." He goes, "I've followed you for years." I said, "All right." He goes, "I used to work with Ellie." I goes, "Oh yeah." I goes, "What's she like?" He goes, "Yeah, she was all right." He goes, "But she told everyone I was fucking her." And I was like, "Okay." I said. Was you fucking her? He said, no, I've never fucked her. So I just went, I went like, oh, I was like, fucking hell. This is going to be an interesting hell. investigation. I was like, that's enough. <laughs> just an, it's just more. Barrow MP Simon Fell. Yeah. I've got a meeting with him on the 20th. Okay, when you go to that meeting with him, yeah. he said, soon the vultures who make their money and reputations out of others' misery appeared. The far right and most obvious with Tommy Robinson whipping up the tensions. I don't think he whipped my tensions up for me. I will do. Yeah. No, I will, 100%. Right. And uh, just let him know and tell him I said you actually helped. You helped. If we'll be honest, I'm not. I'm not it's true. Did I, no, yeah. I said that. I said that. I said after the MEP elections and everything was going through, I used to say I can't wait till he turns up. Mm -hmm. I knew you'll turn up. Yeah. I knew you'll turn up. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'll turn up. And I said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, I, then we're going to tell you something. That you are. Yeah. Is you're a man of uh, a certain name, character. Yeah. Right? I'm a colourful character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah you've got a character. Yeah. I, I swear to God, because I was in Bolton, do you remember when you first phoned me? Yep. I, I, I always had hair. I shaved my hair so I could look a bit thuggish. 
<laughs> it was unsuccessful. So. <laughs> I'm not getting intimidated by him. I'm not getting intimidated by him. Walked in like that. Yeah. All right. Good. All right, Tommy. Tommy. <laughs> well, Mo, I'm happy for your family. If I'm, if I'm, if I'm, I'm, not, I'm happy for you. I'm, I'm happy for your family. I'm happy that they're in a better place, and I hope that um, I hope that everyone, your name's clear with everyone. It was nice to meet you, man. Your nice character. To meet you, man. Okay. Your character. <laughs> One of the final things we found out in our investigation while we were there was that Ellie Williams was having consensual sex with some of the Muslims she accused of trafficking her. This has now came out and everyone can read it from the court case. And now I'm back on Twitter. I can directly combat their lies. It was the reason for cancelling me. It was the reason for censorship. So they could tell you who I am. So they could lie to you. You've seen lie after lie after lie by them. That I travelled to Barrow. You've seen MPs and media. I travelled to Barrow to incite fear against the Muslim community. I went there to investigate to find the truth. Nothing else. You can see me for who I am. I'm someone that doesn't want to bullshit you. I want to bring you the truth and expose corruption at all levels. We're bringing you content no one else will. We need your help and we need your support. We have no big funders. If you can support our work, we're halfway through two more documentaries. We literally do not have the resources to finish them. Please sign up and help us, just the cost of a coffee. You can support us at www.urbanscoop.news forward slash support us. Thank you.